What's going on guys? Welcome to Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to be talking about salmon fishing rods and specifically the tags that are on these rods and how to interpret that information, what it means, so you can get out there and find the right rod for what type of fishing it is that you want to do. So let's jump right into this. So when it comes to rods, there's three main categories and it's going to be light, medium, and heavy. And there are companies out there that do different variations, uh, fast, slow, extra fast, and uh, we'll also cover some of that. So the first thing we're going to want to do when we find a rod is come down onto the blank and you're going to look down here on this lower section just above the handle and you're going to find all the information that you need. So if we take a look at this first rod here, the first thing we're going to see on there is going to be the model number and that's going to be followed by the length of the rod. This rod here is 9 foot 6 inches. It has a line rating of 6 to 10 pounds, a lure rating of 1 8 ounces to 5 8 ounces, and this is also a light action rod. So now if we come up here to this next one, again, we're going to have the model number followed by the length. This is again 9 foot 6 inches, and this one shows us ML action. So that's going to be a medium light action rod with a 6 to 12 pound line rating on there and a quarter ounce to a half ounce lure rating. Coming up here to our next one, again, obviously model number. This one's nine foot, eight inches long. It is a medium action rod rated for six to 15 pounds and a quarter ounce to a three quarter ounce lure weight. Then we'll come up here to this rod. It's a heavy rod. We've got a nine foot rod here. It's a heavy rod. The lure rating is two to six ounces and a line rating of 15 to 40 pounds. So let's cover what some of that information means. So to do that, we're gonna to need to come back to those three categories of light, medium, and heavy. So basically what that's talking about is how much force it's going to take to get your rod to bend, where your rod is going to bend, how far down it's going to bend to, as well as how fast that bend is going to snap back to its original position. So what I have here in my hand is the tip of the light action rod that I'd shown you guys earlier. Now being a light action rod, it's also considered a slow action rod because it's going to bend a lot further down the rod and it's also going to take longer to get back to its original straight position. Now if we're talking about a medium action rod, it's going to have more backbone and it's going to be stiff and really our bend is really just going to be happening in those first couple inches of the tip before it transfers and balances out that power into your blank. And then here I have the tip of the heavy action rod which obviously is going to be very stiff and it's only going to bend at the very tip and it's going to snap back to its position really quick. So the best way to interpret that sometimes uh, if you want to think about slow action, fast action, is just think about the light, medium, and the heavy and how fast the tip is going to get back to its original straight position. So again, our lightweight pretty much being a slow action, and our medium rod here would be a moderate to a moderate fast action. And our heavy rod down here would definitely be a fast action. So I hope that kind of clears up any confusion for you guys out there that were kind of lost with that. So that brings us down to the line weight. What I've got here is a little nine foot six Okuma Salillo. And this one is rated for six to 12 pounds. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean I can only put six to 12 pounds of monofilament or six to 12 pounds braid on there? So what that means for this rod here is that six to 12 pounds, this rod was built to have its best castability and best sensitivity uh, based around having a six to 12 pound diameter line on there. But if we take a quick look at this braid here, we can see that it's rated at 30 pounds, but just below that, it actually only has an eight pound diameter. So we would be able to take 20 pound braid, 30 pound braid, and be able to use it with this rod. Now that's gonna take us down to the looter weight. And as I say time and time again, these are some numbers that you really wanna pay attention to because this rod, was built to handle within this spectrum of numbers. And if you put on anything smaller or too big, it's just not gonna load the tip properly and cast effectively for you out there. So this rod that I've got here is a quarter ounce to a three quarter ounce. And so again, as I mentioned, you don't really wanna be throwing anything smaller than a quarter ounce and you don't wanna be throwing anything bigger than a three quarter ounce. You might be able to get away with doing a little bit bigger, a seven eighths or a one ounce, but generally you wanna try and stick within those specs so you can load this rod properly. So hopefully that makes enough sense for any of you guys that might have been confused out there. You can now go and pick up a rod, look at this information, and know how to interpret it. So now let's talk about some rod lengths and their different uses. So just like steelhead fishing, we're going to be working with a range in between 8 foot 6 up to 10 foot 6. And honestly, I, myself, I don't do any type of uh, salmon steelhead fishing using an 
eight foot six rod, but we are going to be working with that eight foot six up to 10 foot six. Now, if we're talking about fishing with spinners, uh, and this is going to be more locally around here, and we're not talking about fishing off of jetties or down in bays using bigger rods. We're talking about some of our coastal tributaries and some of our uh, medium sized local rivers around here. That's where we're going to go from about eight foot six up to about a nine foot eight. That's a really good range. And again, as I mentioned, uh, really I would start about nine foot because you just want a little bit of that extra reach to get up there. But nine foot up to nine eight is a really great range for getting out there. And I usually try and use a medium powered rod. Uh, I would recommend a medium power for any of you guys that are out there just starting to get into this. Maybe you're out there and you're wanting to float some eggs underneath a bobber. Now this is where our slightly larger rods are going to start coming into play. And I would start down at the smallest probably being about a nine foot six rod up to our 10 foot six. Again, kind of depending on the location that you're going to be fishing, as well as taking into consideration the size of the fish that could be in that area. We're not going to cover plunking because I honestly, you guys, I hardly know anything about plunking. Uh, twitching jigs. If we're going to go with twitching jigs, this again, kind of everything always depends on the type of water that you're going to be fishing. Uh, but a lot of my twitching jig stuff that I did last year was with a nine foot up to about a nine foot six, and I can get a good action out of the uh, jig that way. Those are just a couple of my personal recommendations. So again, really quick for spinners, eight foot six up to nine six, maybe nine eight. They're going to be out there throwing something underneath of a bobber. Then I would start nine six, nine eight, all the way up to ten six. Again, depending on where you're going to be fishing. If I could recommend an all around rod uh, for throwing spinners, doing bobber and jig, doing uh, twitching jigs or whatever, I would recommend a nine foot six medium action rod. That's going to do it, you guys. Again, I hope that helped out. Best of luck out there.